imitation. Brian, why is that light on? Is it? Where? Never mind, I'll get it. Good what? evening. Good evening. Brian, there's, there's someone in our house. You go see, go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Stay here and I'll take care of this. Good evening. You surprised me. I didn't expect you home so soon. It was the play, an awful bore. Oh, please, sit down. Can't you speak? I can carry on a conversation alone, but the, the question and answer method is usually preferred. <laughs> you, you're a thief. Exactly. And you, miss, the lady of the house, I presume. <laughs> or are you another thief? The traditional one that it takes to catch the first. This, this is our house. Brian, why are you just sitting there? Why don't you do something? Look, you, you better clear out. We've come home. Come on, be sensible. I don't want to use force. I don't want you to. If you've got anything of ours... Don't bother with that. You're not armed. I found your revolver in the bottom of your dresser drawer. I never carry one myself. Bad shape, those drawers. Nice and neat on top, a rat's nest below. I said to myself when I opened that drawer, they put on a great surface, but they're shams. That streak probably runs through everything they do. Only being neat on top is a form of dishonesty. You, talking to us about honesty in our house. Just the place for honesty begins at home. Brian, do I have to stand here and be insulted? I won't have it being lectured by a thief. You can't stop a man from talking. Can't you see he's a born preacher? Brian, you could take him. You're bigger than he is. No doubt you could, but that wouldn't stop my talking. Let's discuss the situation like civilized people, and when we've come to an understanding, I'll go. Yes, after you've taken everything in the house and criticized everything you can't take, our manners and our morals. But he isn't taking anything now, is he? Let him criticize. I don't suppose he often meets his uh, customers socially. He's probably dying for a good chat. Lonesome profession, isn't it? Stealing. If you won't do anything, I'll get the neighbors. Oh, don't bother. Your neighbors aren't home yet. That happens when you live in a popular suburb. Won't you sit down? Have a cigarette. Thank you, but I don't care to smoke, even if it is some fancy brand. <sighs> They're from your next door neighbor. These were uh, his cigarettes, <laughs> exquisite taste. Shared them often, I suppose. Uh, great friends? Oh, perhaps you don't move in the same circles. Well, here's your chance to get acquainted with his cigarettes. These are an expensive <laughs> brand. Hempstead must be a connoisseur. Truth is, we don't know the Hempsteads. They've never invited us over. I'm sorry. I don't have time to discuss your social isolation or your neighbor's shortcomings, so let's get down to business. The question we've got to decide, and decide very quickly, is what would you like to have me take? What would we, what would we like to have you take? What? You can't take anything now. We're here. Of all the nerve, what would we like? Come, come again. I may be slow, but I don't see the necessity of your taking anything. I was afraid of this. I'll have to begin further back. Look here now. Just suppose I go away and don't take anything. How would you like that? Suits me just fine. How about you, Claire? Don't be sarcastic. When I'm trying to help you out of a ticklish situation, that isn't very nice. Beg pardon? This situation is all new to us. Well, listen then, and, and see if you can follow. 
there's nothing in your house that I want. I shudder to think of owning any of this cheap junk, but here I am, offering to burden myself with something I don't want, wouldn't keep for the world, and couldn't sell. Why do I do this? Yes, why do you? Hush, Brian, it's a rhetorical question. He wants to answer it himself. I do it to accommodate you. Imagine that I go away, refusing to take anything in spite of your protests. Imagine it's tomorrow. The police and the reporters have caught wind of the story. Something has been taken from every house on Sergeant Road, except one. The nature of the articles shows that the thief is a man of rare discrimination, to be quite frank, a connoisseur. A connoisseur of what? A connoisseur of such judgment that to have him reject your Keith Haring print is to cast doubt upon its authenticity. Let me tell you that from the Hempsteads. Oh, but that would take too long. The public immediately asks, why would the thief take nothing from 28 Sergeant Road? Well, the answer is too obvious. There is nothing worth taking at 28 Sergeant Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The public laughs. Worse still, the neighbors laugh. What becomes of social pretensions after that? It's a serious thing, laughter is. It is, it's a serious thing to have a thief pass you by. People have been socially marooned for less. Have I made myself clear? Are you ready for the next question? What would you like to have me take? Well, that certainly is clever. Sure you're not a lawyer. Well, I've studied the law, but not from that side. It's ridiculous. We could just claim we'd lost something very valuable, something we never even had. Yes, you could lie about it. But think of this. Suppose I take nothing, and you should spread that barefaced lie. If I got caught, would I shield you? Never. Even if I never get caught, has no one entered your house since you've been here? No matter. It still isn't worth the risk. It isn't even common sense. Why do people never stop to think of the practical advantages of having things stolen? Why, a woman loses a $500 ring, and it's immediately worth 5000 The longer it stays lost, the more its value appreciates, until she prays God every night that it won't be found. Look at the advertising she gets out of it. <clears throat> Does she learn anything from it? Never. And let a harmless thief appear in her room and she yells like a hyena instead of saying to him like a sensible woman, Hands up! I've got you right where I want you. You take those cubic zirconiums off my dresser and get the hell out. If I ever see you or those fake diamonds around here again, I'll hand you over to the police. No, that's what she ought to say. It's the chance of her life, but unless she's an actress, she misses it entirely. A thief doesn't expect gratitude, but it seems to me he might at least expect understanding and intelligent cooperation. Here you are, facing disgrace, and here am I, willing to save you. And what do I get? Sarcasm. Cheap sarcasm. I'm sorry. You're just too advanced for us. Claire, there's an idea in this. What do you think? It has its possibilities. Now, if he'll let me choose, oh, let me think. What types of things do you want? What do I want? I don't want anything. The question is, what do you want me to have? And please be a little considerate. Don't ask me to take that obscenely large flat screen or the Nordic track. Haven't you got some old wedding gifts? Everybody has. They're worthless, yet you don't dare get rid of them for fear of people will come over and ask about them. A discriminating thief is a godsend. 
All you have to do is write, Dear Jesse and Jason, Last night our house was broken into, and of course the first thing taken was that lovely fondue set you gave us. Or choose what you like. Here's opportunity knocking at your door. Make it something ugly as you please, but something genuine. I hate sham. Ryan, it's, it's our chance. There's that lovely uh, hand carved. Oh, stop. I saw it. It has Pier 1 imports written all over it. Not that. I can't take that. Beggars shouldn't be choosers. Uh, that settles it. We're done here. Oh, no, don't, don't go. I didn't mean it. Honestly, I didn't. It just slipped out. Uh, I don't have to put up with such nonsense. Uh, oh, please stay and take something up. Brian, will you talk to him? Look, she didn't mean it. You know these old sayings? It just slip out. You ought to hear what she calls me sometimes. I don't want to. I'm not her husband. But I won't be mean. I'll give you another chance. Trot out your curios. We, uh... We have a complete China service. I think it was Claire's grandmother. I'm no judge of such things myself. But if you could use it, take it. Nobody can use it. I saw it. The pattern was on clearance at Walmart five years ago. You don't know anything about us. You're just trying to humiliate us because you know you have the upper hand. All right, go ahead. Take your own risks. Oh, there's this? No. Ugh. Do you like old glassware? Yes. Where is it? No. Oh, this darling. Oh, please take it away. Hmm. How about uh, hey, how about this one? Oh no, it would be different if any of these things were what you say they are, but they aren't. Hey, uh, you consider burnt wood? Nothing short of cremation would do it justice. Of course, I've got to take one of them if they're all you've got. But honestly, there isn't one genuine thing in this house except Brian and the ham sandwich. I, I wonder if you would treasure this as I do. It's very dear to me. It's grandma. Grandmother again? When she was a little girl, wasn't she beautiful? Would you like it? Well, uh, trying to appeal to my sympathy. I wonder if it is your grandmother. No, there isn't the slightest family resemblance. Oh, look here. It's, it's the stock photo that came in the frame. I apologize for that one. Claire, let's stop this. I wanted to see if he'd know. Ryan, you're a good sport, so okay, I'll take the picture. Wait a minute. You won't have to. Say, Claire, where's that painting of Great Uncle Paul? Oh. Not very good, but it's genuine, if that's what you want. Uh, who is Great Uncle Paul? Don't try to switch out a Donald Trump print on me. He's an old relative of mine. He used to live on a farm near Madison, Wisconsin. You don't claim the picture is by Sargent or Whistler? It couldn't be. Uh, do you, Brian? Certainly not. It's a watercolor, but almost a speaking likeness. I'll take Great Uncle Paul. Probably he has some human interest. Bring him, but wrapped, please. My courage might fail me if I saw him face to face. Mine always does. <laughs> While Brian is wrapping up the picture, I want to know how you got back so early. I thought you were supposed to go see Hamilton. Oh, well, that's what we wanted to do, but the tickets were outrageous. So we went to a movie instead. Oh, you shouldn't go to the movies. It will destroy your literary taste and weaken your minds. I don't care for that myself, but Brian won't see anything else. You ought to make him. 
Men only go to the theater anyway because their wives take them. They'd rather stay at home or go to the sports bar. Brian will go where you take him. Yeah, by and by, he will begin to like it. Now, tonight you could have seen Hamilton and you went to the movies, probably to see a woman whose idea of cuteness is to act as if she had a case of arrested mental development. Oh, stupid movies. <coughs> Clarence Sis. She's on the Lifetime Network all afternoon then drags me to the multiplex at night. Here's your painting. Don't, can't tell you how grateful we are. Shall we make it unanimous, Claire? Leave me out of this. Wait, um, just let me wrap that better. Don't try to thank me. I'll feel repaid if you'll take my advice about the theater, at least. And why don't you take all of this junk and sell it on eBay, then get one good thing? Who'd buy it? Well, there must be other people in the world with, with taste as infallibly bad as yours. <laughs> I'm not telling you to sell them as relics. Uh, you couldn't. I wish I could help you pick out something good with your money, but I, I don't dare risk seeing you again. Oh, why not? There's honor among thieves, hmm? Well, there is, and if you were thieves, I just... I would know just how far to trust you. Now, I'd be willing to trust Brian man to man, but uh, I don't know. Claire's just as honest as we are. It's just that your profession puts her off. But you've been a liberal education for both of us. Well, I've... Oh, listen, there, there are footsteps on the porch. I've been sitting here for far too long. Well, stop now and hide. No, I'm safe here, safer than anywhere else. If you pretend I'm a friend of yours, will you? A gentleman's agreement. Word of honor. <sighs> Agreed, but just this once. <laughs> Don't tell one more than a necessary lie. Stick to it that I'm a friend of the family, just spending the evening. God knows I have. I'll try to stick to that, but, but can I improvise a little? It could be such fun. Not a bit. Not one little white lie. Uh, it's someone from the news. Uh, she was out here on another story, but just got a big scoop. There's been some artistic burglary in the neighborhood. Uh, I said we hadn't lost anything, but she wants us to answer a few questions. Please do. Uh, I need some stuff about the neighborhood. I don't know, Brian, but it is our duty. Something we say may ha help catch the thieves. That's right. Uh, would you object if I used your name? I don't think we should mind if you mention us nicely. Will the Hempsteads be in it? Because I don't mind if they don't. Good for you. Now. Have you... We have missed something. Oh, we haven't had time to look thoroughly, but we do know that one of our ancestral portraits is gone. Ah, valuable. He hasn't taken anything that wasn't best of its class. Remarkable thief. Must be the same one that raided the Anderson's collection of rare lithographs. Uh, took only the finest pieces without a mistake. Yeah, he made one big mistake. He almost... Uh, you, you, know, you know the Andersons? Well, yes, I've, I've been in their house. Well, believe me, if he's taken anything, your reputation as serious collectors will be made. Portrait? An old master? No, uh, an American realist portrait. We treasured it for... The authenticity, you know? Must have been valuable, all right. He doesn't take junk. Who was the artist? We don't know definitively, but there have been people who have thought it was not a, um, a Thomas Hart Benton. Claire. I, I don't know much about such things myself, but our friend, Mr. Mr. Christie, 
who has some reputation as a collector, has always said that it was not. In spite of that fact, he had offered to take it off our hands. Claire, you're going too far. She's quite right, Mr. Christie. You may be good, but this fellow knows. Too bad you didn't take it while the taking was good. He steals things, but never sells them. Of course, he can't exhibit. He just loves beautiful things. No, sir, it was real. It wasn't of all the... Oh, now don't take it badly, Mr. Christie. Anyone can be mistaken sometimes. Be careful. The picture may be found at any minute. I hardly think it will be found unless the thief is caught. And I don't expect that. You think he had lots of time for a getaway? When was he here? He was gone when we came from the theater, but we must have almost caught him. Some of our finest things were gathered here on the table. How he must have hated to leave them. I almost feel sorry for him. I do. You see, we went to the city to see Hamilton. Mr. Christie took us. I'm devoted to the best in theater, and I always insist that Brian and Mr. Christie and I only go to the finest things. And now we come home to find our, uh, you're sure it was a Thomas Hart Benton? Gone. I've got to be getting out of here. I can't stay a minute longer. Uh, Brian, I, I wish you luck in that reform we were speaking of, but I haven't much hope. Uh, oh, here. Uh, what am I thinking of? <laughs> I was running away with your package. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's yours, Mr. Christie. Really, you must keep it. Put it among your treasures next to your lovely lithographs, and whenever you look at it, remember us in this delightful evening. You must keep it. Part of the bargain, isn't it? And now, are we even? Even? <laughs> Far from it. Good night, Claire. May I give you a lift? Ah, uh, thanks. As far as the Hempstead's Corner. Good night. Thank you so much for your help. Thank goodness they've gone. That was all too much. You both had me running around in circles. Now he's got the picture and we're done. But I will say you pushed it pretty far. Couldn't help it. Did you hear him call me Claire? He had to, he doesn't know our last name. But he wasn't a bad fellow, was he? I, I couldn't help liking him. You showed it. You took sides with him against me all the time the reporter was here. But you know, he was right about our house. It all looks cheap. We need to clear out everything in this room and get some quality things. That will be expensive. Wait till we're a little bit more ahead. But they have great stuff at home, good. Listen, is he coming back? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Christie says you've given him the wrong package. He says you need this to go with the picture of your grandmother? And sir, he said to tell you that you need to get wise to your own family. Uh, He's waiting for me. Good night. Get wise to my own family? He may know all about art, but I guess I know my own relatives. <laughs> and if this isn't the original portrait of great uncle pa What the <laughs> devil? Claire, you did that, you little sneak. <laughs> <laughs> 